This is Hit and Run, G.I. Joe's light infantryman from 1988. He was first available in 1988. He was also available in 1989. There was a Target exclusive Hit and Run with Parachute Pack, in which he came with uh, this Parachute Pack that was previously a Mail Away exclusive from 1985. It was identical to the 1985 Parachute Pack, uh, minus the helmet and the air mask, but the file card was different too. And Instead of having a gray back file card like this, it had a file card that had kind of a yellow background. He came with this weapon, which the contents of the card on which he was packaged call a Colt 9mm submachine gun. He comes with this huge duffel bag with a strap that can be slung across his body and over his shoulder. And this duffel bag has a mechanism with a grapple hook and line. This grapple hook has a long string that can be played out just by pulling on it. You can wind it back up by turning this handle here on the top of the duffel bag. Pulling the duffel bag apart, you can see how the mechanism works inside. Flipping the duffel bag around to the other side, we can see the final accessory, which is this knife. Taking a look at the knife itself, we can see some detail on it, not a lot. This may be intended to represent a K-bar knife, but it is not an exact replica of that real-world weapon. Here's what Hidden Run looks like with the parachute pack that would have come with the Target exclusive. Let's take a look at the articulation on Hidden Run. He had the the typical articulation of 1988 G.I. Joe action figures. That means he could turn his head from left to right. Uh, he could also look up and down. His neck was on a ball joint. He could lift his arm up at the shoulder about so far. He could swivel his arm at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow so he could move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep. He could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber o-ring that looped around the inside so he could move at the torso a little bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could move his legs at the hip about 90 degrees, and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Hit and Run, starting with his head. And the first thing you notice about his head is that his face is green. This is supposed to represent green face paint with black stripes on it. Also on his head is this non-removable helmet. He has these red goggles, and these red goggles are red adaptation goggles. These are worn to preserve a person's natural night vision. On his chest we have black straps for what looks like a harness. He has a couple grenades, a camouflage pattern, a black on green camouflage pattern. The straps continue around to the back. On his arms he has long sleeves that come down to this sort of ridged cuff here with that camouflage pattern. And you can see that his hands are also painted with that green and black striped camouflage paint. On his waist piece he has this black belt that looks like it's part of the same harness system. And there's this loop here on the belt. On his legs we can see the straps from the harness continue down to his legs, uh, more of that camouflage pattern, and some very simple standard black boots. Let's take a look at the file card. The file card was printed on the back of the card on which the action figure was packaged. You can see some of the artwork from the front of the card here, uh, and as you can see it also has instructions for how to assemble the duffel bag. It has his faction as G.I. Joe down here. It has a very nice portrait of Hit and Run. Uh, it does say his code name is Hit and Run. It says he is a light infantryman. His file name is Brent Scott. His primary military specialty is infantry. Secondary military specialty is mountaineering. His birthplace is Sioux City, Iowa, and his grade is E4. This section says, Orphaned at the age of three by a drunk driver, Hit and Run grew up in a county institution from which he escaped with alarming regularity, climbing down sheer walls and running for miles across the plains in the middle of the night. When asked what he was running away from, he replied, I'm not running away from anything. I'm practicing. He went from the custody of the county directly into the army. This bottom section has a quote. It says, Infantrymen don't march. They run. They run to get to the battle. They run during the battle. And they run to get away from the battle. The army doesn't call it running. They call the first one advancing, the second maneuvering, and the last disengaging. Hit and Run calls it all running, and he's real good at it. Hit and Run does not have have many media appearances. He first appeared in the G.I. Joe comic book in issue number 80, but he had no cartoon series appearances.